Plastics are a ubiquitous part of modern life, showing up in food and drink containers, clothes, plastic bags, and so much more. Plastics have gotten a lot tougher over the years, but as anybody with a banged up old cell phone in their pocket can tell you, they still scratch and crack with wear. That's why chemists and other scientists are developing a new type of plastic that mimics the human skin's ability to heal scratches and cuts. These new plastics offer the promise of cell phones, laptops, cars, and other products with self-repairing, longer-lasting surfaces. For a first-hand look at self-healing plastics, we visited the lab of Nancy Sados. She's made many contributions to this field and has published her work in a number of American Chemical Society journals. So, so self-healing materials are inspired by the, the human body. You know that if you get a cut, Ouch. Um, what happens right away is that you've, you've got a circulatory network. The first thing that happens is a quick response. It brings the necessary clotting agents and you form a clot. Then depending on the severity of the cut, then you have other processes go along, like you have a lot of remodeling and regrowth that will occur and then basically you heal. So in, in self-healing materials, what we've tried to do is, is mimic that synthetically. So we use, um, uh, we're able to put either capsules or, or vascular networks right into a material and they deliver these reactive uh, healing chemistries that, that basically form a synthetic clot. Um, and sometimes, just like in a natural system, the healing, it, it takes a while. You may close it, but then you have to give it time to, to polymerize and heal. Today I'm going to show you microcapsules that have uh, been used in self-healing materials. So first I will show you uh, some microcapsules. You can imagine like a, a little tiny X uh, that has a, a liquid core material uh, protected by solid shield wall materials. So you can see they are uh, microcapsules. When you apply some force and break it, you can see uh, a liquid core material release out like blood. So you can see this is an intact specimen. So now I'm going to break it. So there's a crack. Now you can see it starts bleeding. Like a scar, like a card in your finger is bleeding. After day or two, it's cured by itself. That's, what, that's uh, the, the concept that we are mimicking. Um, here. Today I'm going to show you an example of a self-healing electronic circuit. And this component is a part of our circuit that is self-healing. The way that this concept works is when the circuit um, and this component is scratched or damaged, uh, the silver line will be broken and then the microcapsules in the healing layer above uh, will release their contents, redistribute the silver particles, and heal the circuit. Let me just clip this into our circuit and if you take a look here here's our component here's a battery pack that's powering our light bulb if I simply break our circuit you will see this light bulb go off and now we wait as these particles are redistributing that's really what's limiting the healing time and now the light bulb is on and we've restored conductivity and this is our self-healing concept for electronics. So these could be ideally used for circuit boards and computers and sensitive parts, and we could get at least 100 heals out of this. So um, certainly this would, this would help with uh, improving the lifetime of electronics. I'm working on a little bit different concept as opposed to the microcapsules. We're looking at a microvascular system. So this is a bio-inspired concept, similar like you have in your bodies. We have veins and these type of vascular networks running in our system. And the advantages of these is that we can now, instead of delivering just one time healing agents, we can actually deliver multiple times and pump as if you're actually bleeding in a system. And so in order to demonstrate this concept, what we're going to do is we have a foam sample here where essentially we're going to apply load to this member and as it starts to bend, there's a crack in this material. We will then pump some of this material into the crack location and it will begin to foam and react. And upon subsequent unloading and about five minutes later, you can see that foam has been created and expanded and actually filled the entire crack plane. It's actually coming out of the material now. And if we test this material again, it will actually end up in some cases stronger than it was before. So the healing system, you know, is, is, is very rapid, uh, expansive, and, um, you know, does recover full strength of, of the original material. So 
we think it's a good, a good system to pursue. So um, there are many products that can benefit from self-healing properties. I know most people would like their, their cell phones or their personal electronics to be self-healing. That's a little ways off, um, but um, probably the, the application that'll come out first and, and a very useful one is to have self-healing paints and coatings. So in a, in a self-healing paint, uh, you would use microcapsules for that, and the microcapsules essentially mix in just like a pigment. Uh, paints have lots of additives in them to be already, and the microcapsules we use are quite small. Usually they're, they're less than 20 microns, and they can even be on the nanometer scale, uh, depending on the application and, and what we're doing. So they just they mix in like a, like a filler or a, a paint pigment. But we'd like to see it move into to other products, self-healing, um, microelectronic devices, and then moving on to structural items like parts of buildings, joints, things that you might have in an aircraft. So we hope that um, we're able to create plastic and uh, polymers and polymer components that actually are safer, uh, more reliable, and, and have longer lifetimes. <laughs>